Hello friends, welcome back. So, you may recall that we have discussed so many issues related to air quality, air pollution like air quality management, assessment, monitoring, modeling, indoor, outdoor air quality, so many issues. Okay? So, today onwards we will discuss about environmental issues of global and regional scale. And first of all, let us start uh, with ozone layer depletion because this is one uh, issue which is uh, you know affecting across the world and very important because of uh, its uh, serious nature as uh, you know it can affect all kind of ecosystems and humans or all kind of species. So, we will discuss first of all introduction then how ozone layer is formed basically then what is the depletion of ozone, ozone layer, what is the science behind it and uh, the eff effects of ozone layer depletion if ozone layer is destroyed then what kind of negative impacts we can uh, you know foresee and then uh, what is the you know uh, mechanism of formation of so called ozone hole. Eh? First of all we will discuss whether it is a really hole or something else why this ozone hole uh, terminology uh, came into existence. Then we will see the timeline uh, of this ozone depletion how it started what is its uh, you know stage and uh, what are the substances which are responsible for depletion of ozone layer and then international treaties which were necessary for protecting the stratospheric ozone layer. Okay? And then we will see actions several actions which have been used to protect the ozone layer and what are their uh, you know impacts like updates on the global ozone uh, you know scenario and after all we will conclude. So, when we look into this ozone layer case, uh, basically ozone is nothing but a very reactive uh, gas with the three uh, you know atoms of uh, oxygen O3 right. And uh, in, in the atmosphere basically it is present in stratosphere though it is uh, you know formed in stratos uh, troposphere also means mainly it is in stratosphere where this layer is there and it protects us from ultraviolet rays but in troposphere it is produced as a secondary pollutant. So, that, that also we will see you can see here like uh, up to this troposphere is there and when uh, you know this um, about this troposphere. So, this ozone layer means ozone concentration increases okay? ozone abundance you can see here as we go up in the altitude and it goes up to like uh, uh, 15 miles or so then again it is start to decrease. But up to this means uh, around 5 miles or so it is quite thick layer in terms of that concentration of the ozone which we see as a layer in the stratosphere. Okay? And this layer basically absorbs the amount of harmful ultraviolet rays and you know the ultraviolet rays can be of A, B or uh, you know C uh, that kind of uh, different spectrum. Well, this radiation has linked to many harmful effects such as skin cancers or you know cataracts, this blurred vision and it can also damage the crops and vegetation and marine life. So, that is very important aspect that this ultraviolet rays protection through ozone layer is something which is kind of you know building block of our uh, life on the earth surface you can say. Well, when we see this uh, you know mechanism how this ozone is produced in the stratos stratosphere. So, you can see this uh, you know oxygen is there two atoms of oxygen uh, because of this uh, you know ultraviolet sunlight it dissociate into two atoms. One atom gets attached to you know one molecule and then one molecule of oxygen and this molecule of ozone is produced similarly happens here also. So, you can say that three molecules of oxygen basically produce uh, two molecules of ozone. Okay? So, from oxygen to ozone production this kind of uh, reaction occurs in the presence of sunlight or ultraviolet rays basically. And uh, you know you can see here uh, at a given altitude and latitude this is a dynamic equilibrium because uh, it is uh, you know cyclic reaction means ozone is produced then it is destroyed okay? and then again ozone is produced that kind of thing happen. And this particular interaction of ultraviolet radiation with oxygen and ozone prevents the penetration of this short wave ultraviolet to the earth surface. So, that is wonderful mechanism in the nature which protects us from the ultraviolet rays because in this process this ozone is formed. Uh, because of oxygen dissociation into 
you know uh, oxygen uh, atoms and then association with uh, oxygen molecules and creation of ozone molecules. Okay, you can see tropospheric ozone formation is little bit different because it needs some precursors. Precursors are those kind of you know uh, compounds, chemical compounds or air pollutants you can say uh, which again in the presence of sunlight because of this uh, uh, you know these uh, photochemical reactions they produce ozone that is why we call them precursors like carbon monoxide or you know VOCs uh, volatile organic compounds or non-methane hydrocarbons VOCs and uh, uh, you know all those kind of uh, pollutants they are precursors of the ozone and uh, in the in the presence of these OH radicals or hydroxyl radicals HO2 and then you know these ultraviolet uh, sorry sunlight the photochemical reactions and then again this ozone production is there. So, we will see the reactions how does it uh, you know occur later on we will see, but basically you can say that because it is dependent on you know uh, solar radiation. So, basically the variation happens from morning to evening in the troposphere I am talking now of the tropospheric ozone. Troposphere means where we are living, troposphere is the first layer of the atmosphere just near to the earth surface. After that stratosphere there and this ozone layer is basically in stratosphere, but just for your knowledge we are you know discussing about this tropospheric ozone formation also because sometimes we get confused why it is you know bad ozone when sometimes it is present in the atmosphere in troposphere because it is harmful for us. But in stratosphere it is very good it is our friend in the stratosphere. So, ozone layer is good in the stratosphere, but ozone production in trop troposphere is very bad because it is having several negative impacts on our life on our property on ecosystem etcetera. Anyway, so I was saying because this is a photochemical reaction it happens in the presence of sunlight. So, there is the diurnal variation in the daytime. So, ozone production becomes at peak in the afternoon or when sunlight is quite bright at the noon time or so because precursors are there then ozone production is there okay. and then uh, you know, but in the downwind directions you know because like in city centers there may be many emissions of these NOx and precursors of ozone like VOCs etcetera. But uh, ozone production you know titration also happens uh, with the uh, this uh, chemical reaction of ozone because uh, they get like uh, this NO get converted into NO2 in the presence of ozone, but NO2 get uh, you know transported in the downwind direction and there it acts as the precursor and produces ozone again. So, you can say that the cities urban areas sometimes in city centers you will not find so much ozone which is at uh, the regions of downwind direction like uh, countryside region or rural areas and there is no source of those uh, you know precursors, but these precursors come with the wind from the cities. So, you can say these cities which are polluting or emitting lot of air pollutants they also harm the nearby areas like rural areas etcetera. Well, so now if we come to the process of ozone layer depletion how does it happen? So, you can see this animation how this uh, you know like chlorine or bromine atom is there. So, it you know uh, takes away this one uh, uh, atom of the oxygen from the ozone because ozone has three atoms of oxygen one atom it takes it has very fast affinity and then it removes you can say right and one atom of chlorine or bromine can remove thousands of you know hundreds or thousands of ozone molecules it can destroy basically. So, that is why this chain reaction happens and in winter time it is very severe and uh, it can destroy so many uh, you know uh, molecules of ozone that it happens like ozone layer depletion uh, phenomena starts to take place because this layer becomes very thin and that is why we call it. Uh, you know although we call it ozone hole, but it is not a hole you can say this ozone layer is there surrounding this complete our uh, atmosphere uh, surrounding the earth you can say and this layer wherever it is thin. So, it is kind of hole you can say like uh, if there is a thin cloth and uh, you can uh, you know this sunlight passes very uh, thoroughly, but if thick uh, cloth is there or dark cloth is there then it is difficult. So, that way you can visualize that the thin layer of the ozone basically is because of depletion of ozone in that 
layer of stratospheric ozone layer. Well, why it happens? Be where this chlorine and bromine etc. come there? They are because of like CFCs, okay? these chlorofluorocarbons etc. They have this chlorine atom and they are very persistent pollutants basically and they are like a robust you can say or they do not disintegrate very easily. So, in several years they go up to the stratospheric layer because of this you know convection phenomena. It goes up and slowly slowly they reach to the stratosphere. Nobody imagined when in fact CFCs were invented people were very happy this is wonder chemical it is so inert it can be used in uh, you know industrial applications and it is non toxic it is a very good chemical okay? that was a great discovery in, at that time. But nobody imagined that this you know uh, CFC can really harm the ozone layer uh, in the stratosphere. And when you know scientists uh, you know derived these relationships several kind of uh, theories came into existence to debunk that maybe it is because of you know some uh, aliens they are sprink sprinkling some chemical to destroy the human race. So, many stories you know came like conspiracy theories etc. But ultimately it was proved that these CFCs and like N2O nitrous oxide etc. which reaches up to the layer of the stratosphere they are the responsible for you know creating a cyclic chain reaction to destroy the ozone molecules or ozone layer. So, basically these chlorine etc. they are part of this CFCs etc. and they uh, go to the stratosphere by this convection phenomena. Well, you can see again the same uh, thing that chlorine takes away this uh, atom of the oxygen from ozone and uh, oxygen is produced that way ozone is destroyed you can say this, this is a catalytic kind of nature of the reaction and it happens in a chain reaction form means one atom can destroy hundreds and thousands of the molecules. Well, if we see what is the problem if ozone layer depletes. So, we have to see the impacts or the effects. So, there are the effects on human health because this ultraviolet rays will come if there is no ozone layer then ultraviolet rays will directly reach to the surface of the earth and they will have very harmful impacts on human health, materials, plants, crops, vegetation, marine ecosystem, material etcetera. What kind of effects they can have? You can see here like it can increase skin cancer related problems okay? and it can also cause uh, cataracts as I uh, discussed earlier also. In case of you know materials uh, uh, like polymers, biopolymers or synthetic polymers, rubber etcetera because it is very uh, you know kind of reactive. So, this has energy these UV photons. So, they destroy these kind of bonds of the polymers and these kind of material can be destroyed in the presence of these ultraviolet photons. Well, on plants if we see the effects again they can destroy the you know green color and photosynthesis is affected very badly. So, the physiological uh, effect is there and the nutrient value does not reach to the plant properly and ultimately the crop yield uh, is uh, you know reduced uh, significantly as well as you know plant life vegetation etc are affected negatively. If you talk about like marine system or ecosystem of the marine environment again like phytoplanktons etc which are the basic thing for very low form of life like small fish etc. Okay. So, they are destroyed their productivity is uh, severely affected and when the food is not available for small fish then the whole food chain can get affected you can see. So, uh, this exposure to solar ultraviolet radiation is uh, also the damaging to the marine life you can see different this uh, developmental stages of fish can be affected okay. and then it can affect the reproductive capacity also at the larva development stage. Then small increase in ultraviolet rays exposure it could result in population reduction of small marine organism with implications of the this disturbance of the marine uh, whole marine food chain as I said earlier also. So, that way lot of uh, negative impacts are there. Now, if you want to see how this uh, you know ozone hole formation took place. So, as I said this ozone hole is not a hole basically it is the thin layer means wherever this ozone concentration becomes very thin we call it ozone hole. Okay. And at south pole it was first discovered that this layer of the ozone has become very thin ozone has been destroyed you can say in 1980s this was uh, you know in Antarctic spring this was discovered that this uh, the layer the thickness of the ozone layer is very thin with respect to 
earlier uh, readings. And uh, you can see here oh, the concentration of the ozone and this uh, concentration of uh, chlorine uh, uh, monoxide, okay, uh, this was observed. So, when it increased the ozone concentration decreased. So, this also again proves this uh, reaction uh, validation of the reaction of that this uh, presence of these kind of uh, uh, chlorine related uh, compounds can destroy the ozone layer. Well, when we talk about like uh, where it is limited, whether it is at a particular place, it is basically you know uh, has been observed this thin layer of the ozone has been observed at several places. It is not only the south pole, but you know other places also like other continents like Africa, South America, Australia, Asia, everywhere it has been observed that there are patches where ozone layer is thin. Of course, at south pole it is very, very predominant the, the reason is you know in, in you know very low temperature this reaction of chlorine that that cyclic reaction is very intense and winters that is why this ozone layer uh, depletes very significantly and this ozone hole is uh, observed in that sense. Well, what are the substances which are responsible for this uh, ozone hole depletion. So, you can uh, see these chlorine or bromine related uh, compounds are there which we call ozone depleting substances. So, they are like CFCs okay, and uh, other compounds are also there, but basically whosoever chemical is having chlorine and bromine related things, they are responsible for this kind of uh, depletion of ozone at the stratosphere. Well, you can see this the list of the substances and uh, this oxygen depletion potential and global warming potential. Interestingly, these uh, you know ozone depleting substances are also greenhouse gas related uh, you know gases you can say or compounds. So, this chlorofluorocarbon it has around 0 0.6 to 1 ozone depletion uh, you know potential. Uh, in respect of that, but global warming potential it, it has very high okay. in, in like if CO2 has 1, it has around you know 5000 to 11000 times of the CO2 you can say. Then these uh, halons, these are uh, you know like 3 to 10 times uh, oxygen depleting uh, potential, these chlorine etcetera, okay, CLO and those kind of thing and around 1600 or 7000 times of the global warming potential. So, you can see different kind of you know chemicals which, which are you know methyl bromide and all those. Although these hydrofluorocarbons which uh, replace these chlorofluorocarbons like they are having uh, zero uh, ozone depletion potential, but still they are having you know significant uh, these uh, global warming potential, but because their quantity is very less. So, that way you know that has been uh, recommended as the replacement for the CFCs. Well, uh, when these uh, you know this ozone depletion substances they release chlorine. So, they include as I said earlier chlorofluorocarbons or hydrofluorocarbons or carbon tetrachloride or methyl chloroform. Okay, these are basically these ODs, ODS or ozone depleting substances. So, they can release bromine and uh, they can include these halons or methyl bromide also. Right, and then uh, you know, you can see like uh, in stratosphere they can uh, take around uh, two to five years. Okay, uh, eventually they go to the uh, you know uh, in the stratosphere. Although how do they come in the stratosphere? This is so far they are released at the earth surface, but because of this atmospheric circulation, so this convection when you know things go up in advection horizontal movement and in vertical movement we call convection. So, through convection slowly it goes up and uh, ultimately it can reach much of uh, much part of it can reach to the stratosphere within 2 to 5 years and then they start to do this damaging job. Okay. So, in 1970s basically uh, you know lot of concerns about the effects of ozone depleting substances on the stratospheric ozone layer uh, and uh, in several countries it was concern were uh, taken into account like including United States and uh, there were uh, you know demand of banning these CFCs right. But at that time uh, you know people uh, did not come with such a force that it could be banned and later on you can see like global production of CFCs and other uh, these ozone depleting substances continued to grow rapidly as new uses of uh, these chemicals into refrigeration or fire suppression or foam insulation or other applications uh, 
you know got into practice. So, their utility, their application, real world application in a beneficial ma manner, they you know pushed their production in large quantity. So, you could say this kind of debate took into the back burner, but later on you know means uh, people uh, continue to talk about and prove that these are the responsible and then we will see in the timeline that Montreal protocol happened to ban these kind of chemicals. And uh, not only these anthropogenic chemicals, but some natural processes such as large volcanic eruptions can have indirect effect on the ozone levels. Like uh, you know in uh, 1991, the, there was this eruption of uh, Mount uh, Pinatubo uh, eruption. Okay? And uh, it, uh, it this did not increase the stratospheric chlorine concentration, okay? But it did produce large amount of tiny particles called aerosols, and these aerosols basically increased chlorine's effectiveness at the destroying uh, ozone because of this. Uh, kind you can say like temperature reduction or uh, you know this reaction uh, speed or reaction uh, kinetics it increased. Uh, and the effect of volcanoes is short lived in comparison to those chemicals which are responsible for reduction of ozone layer. Well, if we talk about ozone depletion timeline, so in 1928 you know uh, scientists synthesized CFCs chlorofluorocarbons and it was a wonder chemical as I said people uh, industries welcomed it because it was so inert non toxic and that way wonderful chemical. Okay. But in 1973 scientists you know detected that uh, CFCs are present in atmosphere. So, that was a kind of worrisome thing uh, because otherwise people assumed that they will be only near and because they are inert. So, uh, they would not harm any and in any way. Okay. In 74 basically when researchers were uh, publishing uh, you know their results like uh, uh, you know Molina Mario Molina or uh, this uh, Roland Sherwood. So, they uh, you know took these uh, modeling efforts based on their lab reactions, lab based reactions and they found that these CFCs can reach to the uh, you know stratosphere and they can destroy the ozone layer. At the same time in Max Planck Institute for Chemistry Professor Paul Krugen, they also came to conclusion like nitrous oxide also can reach to the at this stratosphere they can also cause the depletion of ozone. So, you know ultimately in 1995 these three scientists were given Nobel Prize uh, for their great discovery, but up to that you know there was great struggle. Uh, to convince the uh, you know community scientific community rather policy makers that these CFCs are responsible and we should stop their production and usage in the industries. Okay. So, in 1975 you know scientists uh, discovered that bromine used in fire retarding halons or agriculture fumigants is also a potent potent ozone depleting, uh, depleting substance. So, that way you know these chlorine, bromine and other uh, kind of uh, chemicals were found to be responsible for depletion of the ozone. In 1985 there was like this uh, British Antarctic survey team they discovered the uh, Antarctic ozone hole uh, okay, in uh, 7.3 million square miles means thin layer uh, marking the first evidence of the stratospheric ozone depletion. And the scientific research uh, revealed uh, that uh, stratospheric ozone layer depletion has adverse uh, adverse environmental and human health effects, which was correlated with those kind of effects which were observed in those years. Basically, in 91, then international scientists agreed that CFCs are uh, you know depleting the stratospheric ozone layer in the northern and southern hemisphere. So that was kind of consensus because of this scientific uh, research and publications, scientific community got uh, you know agreement on this particular issue. In 2000 then uh, Japan Meteorological Agency reported that hole in the stratospheric ozone layer over the Antarctic is at the uh, largest uh, to date in 2000 it was found it was the biggest one okay, more than twice the size of Antarctica. So, that was a uh, big uh, kind of a story in that sense because if it uh, goes on then uh, the life on the earth can be completely. Uh, at the geopardi you can say. In 2015 uh, you know this world uh, meteorological organization observed that ozone hole is reported to be the biggest ever 
exceeding that of 2006. So, that way it was increasing because there was no uh, kind of uh, control on emissions of those uh, ozone depleting substances. So, you can see through 1970s to 1980s the international community became increasingly very concerned about uh, ozone depleting substances and uh, their harmful effects on the ozone layer. In 1985 in parallel means in time story I am uh, telling you that the Vienna convention for the protection of ozone layer occurred uh, was uh, you know held and uh, then uh, this Montreal protocol was signed in 1987 to uh, kind of uh, stop the production of uh, ozone depletion substances. So, after the Montreal protocol was signed new data showed worse than expected damage to the ozone layer. So, because you know these ozone depleting substances keep on working it is not that you are stopping today and the ozone uh, ozone depletion uh, stops it is not because as I said this chemical reaction which is of uh, chain reaction nature it goes and goes and you know one molecule of that particular ozone depleting substance can destroy hundreds and thousands of molecules of the ozone and for years together it, it goes on as their life span is more. So, in 1992 the parties to the Montreal protocol decided to alter the terms of 19, 1987 agreement to end production of halons by 1994 and CFCs by 1996 in developed countries. So, that was a big achievement in that direction. And because of measures taken under the Montreal protocol emissions of these ozone depleting substances started to fall okay? and the ozone layer it started to regain its uh, thickness and it is assumed that uh, because it, it is having the time lag and even if uh, you know the production and emissions of those ozone depleting substances are not there, but <coughs> whatever more chemicals are present in the stratosphere they will take time to uh, you know stop their reaction because uh, their life span is much more at that uh, particular uh, level and one molecule uh, you know destroys hundreds and thousands of molecules of ozone uh, because of this uh, chain reaction. So, it is assumed that uh, ultimately by mid uh, 21st century uh, you know it will be fully recovered that the thickness will be fully recovered you can say. Now, you can see these actions to protect ozone layer in terms of uh, you know timeline. So, in 1975 you know this S. C. Johnson announces corporate phase out of CFCs as aerosol product uh, these propellants. So, that was a good action in that sense we, we will now see the uh, action related timeline earlier we just have discussed like a policy related timeline or means how uh, this was discovered. Uh, observe at in, in terms of observation and what kind of protocols happen, happened. In 1976 this United Nations Environmental Pro Program UNEP called for this international conference to discuss international response to the ozone issue. In 78 you know US banned the non essential usage of CFCs okay, as a propellant in some aerosols like hair spray, uh, deodorant or uh, anti uh, these uh, uh, anti perspirants those kind of things. Canada, Norway and Sweden followed uh, you know similar ban. Then in 81 uh, UNEP developed a global convention to product the ozone layer and 87 this Montreal protocol as we just saw. So, that was basically in 87 24 countries signed this Montreal protocol. So, in the history of this uh, protecting you know ozone layer this uh, uh, Montreal protocol is very important. Okay. So, uh, protocol on substance that deplete the ozone layer. In 89 these developed countries uh, which were parties to the Montreal protocol uh, to ban the production and consumption of CFCs at 86 level. So, those kind of incremental progress was there. In 1990 clean air act amendments including the you know title 6 for stratospheric ozone production signed into law. So, those were the progress. In 1992 US announced these accelerated CFC phase out program on 31st uh, December 1995 and uh, in response to uh, new scientific information about ozone depletion. So, uh, you know that was uh, uh, decided that up to this uh, particular uh, program will be uh, taken shape. In 1993 you can see these announcements so halt its production of CFCs by the end of 1994. 
okay then in 1994 you can see us eliminates production and import of the halons so that was a big big milestone in that uh, you know program in 1996 uh, us eliminated production and imports of cfcs carbon tetrachloride then trichloroethane and hydro bromofluorocarbons okay in 2002 all developing countries that are parties to the montreal protocol banned methyl bromide production uh, you know in 1995 to 1998 average levels they were the benchmark kind of thing baseline data in 2004 all developed countries reduced consumption of these scfcs by 30 percent from the baseline levels in 2010 all developed countries reduced consumption of hcfcs by 65 percent with respect to the baseline data. In 2015, all developed countries reduced consumption of HCFCs by 90 percent from the baseline level. So, that was you know big progress. So, this is as per the timeline, it is assumed that by 2030, all developed countries uh, you know uh, scheduled the complete the phase out of the ozone depleting substances. So, means much progress has been taken place already. In 2040, all developing countries that are parties to the Montreal Protocol, uh, they will be able to completely phase out HCFCs. Okay. So, that way this is the timeline to protect the ozone layer. So, there have been lot of efforts to uh, you know protect the ozone layer or to recover the thickness, original thickness. Uh, of this uh, ozone layer in the stratosphere and good signs are there that because of ban on the production and usage of those ozone depleting substances, now the regaining or recovering of the uh, ozone layer is going on uh, in a very nice way, in a very encouraging way. So, in conclusion we can say that this ozone layer is very important for our life and because it protects uh, the complete uh, you know earth uh, planet with the ultraviolet rays otherwise these ultraviolet rays will reach to the surface and it will destroy the complete life forms of the earth or it will cripple it will have so many negative impacts and uh, harmful impacts. These ozone depleting substances which were primarily responsible for destruction of ozone layer they have been now banned uh, because of uh, you know through international treaties etcetera. And we can see the implications of those treaties like Montreal Protocol that uh, the production and usage of uh, these uh, ozone depleting substances have reduced significantly and now it is uh, helping us to recover the ozone layer. To protect the stratospheric ozone layer now new alternate substances should be developed and they are being developed in, in fact uh, which can result in uh, co-benefits in climate change and energy efficient manner because uh, which is the, this is the need of the hour. So, that these chemicals are not harmful, they are uh, useful for our daily life, but they are not harmful in any sense to uh, this ozone layer or any other kind of climate change related issues they may produce as a side effect. So, we need to be careful about those kind of emissions which are harmful, we have to reduce them and we have to get uh, you know into those kind of energy sources or uh, you know chemicals which are harmless. So, this is all for today and these are the references for additional information and uh, thank you for your kind attention. See you again in the next lecture. Thanks again.